In the mid-1990s, a whole series of fossils with feathers were found in the Liaoning province of China. According to evolution scientists, the discovery of unique feathered fossils supports bird evolution. But reliability problems have emerged for these fossils. Dr. Timothy Rowe is a paleontologist who supports evolution and runs the University of Texas CAT scan laboratory. Dr. Rowe had the unique opportunity to closely examine a Chinese fossil called Confucius Ornis, which to the naked eye appeared to be a solitary fossil. I believe we scanned this in 1997. It was just shortly after the bonanza of Liaoning had hit the news in a big way. I'd never handled any of these specimens before. And this was brought to me and I thought this was how it came out of the ground. And I thought, wow, what an awesome specimen. It's complete and um, massive and, and it was easy to handle. And only by scanning it did I learn, in fact, how it had been repaired. But after scanning the fossil, Dr. Rowe began to question its authenticity. And when I handled it, it was very well built. It, it felt like a single massive piece of rock. And only by looking at it in cross-section could I see that it was built in three layers, two of which were natural, and the intervening layer was made by humans. And so this really started me thinking, well, there's, hmm, there, there's a little more here than meets the eye. Grout and metal chips lay hidden inside the fossil, which became obvious when subjected to the scrutiny of the CAT scan. The fossil had been carefully painted to hide alterations. But once we scanned it, we could see the grout layer. And so when we see steel objects in these things, we know that it's got to be made by humans. Upon further evaluation, Dr. Rowe found a piece of the jaw had been substituted with a bone from another animal. Well, I have no idea what animal this piece came from. It's just a very small fragment of bone, and it was probably chipped out to uh, fit this space. So I have no idea where this uh, extraneous piece came from. There are some other odd pieces around the edges, too, that, that uh, don't uh, fit on this. This first encounter with a Chinese specimen would not be Dr. Rowe's last. A second Chinese fossil was brought to him by a scientist from National Geographic magazine. This fossil, called Archaeoraptor, was purported to be an unusual missing link, which would, once and for all, prove that birds evolved from dinosaurs. It had a long featherless tail, similar to dinosaurs, but it also had feathers and a bird-like body, giving the appearance of two different animals blended together, just as Darwin predicted. As Dr. Rowe carefully scanned the Chinese specimen, and watched the cross-sectional images appear on the computer screen, he noticed something was very wrong. Dr. Rowe discovered that 26 fossil bones from five animals, including a dinosaur and a bird, had been fraudulently constructed to make a transitional fossil. And that was the thing that caught our attention first. We could find no verifiable fit between the tail, the most spectacular part of the specimen. We could find no verifiable fit between that piece and any of the other parts of the block. And we found other irregularities as well. Even though it seems to fit tightly in here, when you look at it in cross-section, you can see that this piece and this piece have no verifiable association with the pieces around them. The next thing happened where the two shin bones were glued in. And likewise, these have no verifiable associations. The next thing that happened is that the foot was glued on. And I say foot rather than feet because this is a single foot. This is a slab and counter slab that were split and separated and glued in place to make it look as though there were right and left feet there. Uh, it's a clever use of materials, you know? If you're limited, you take a single foot and turn it into two, you know? Very, very creative. This schematic diagram shows how many different fossils and rocks were used to create Archaeoraptor. Each color represents a different type of rock and a different type of animal. Dr. Rowe reported his startling discoveries to the National Geographic scientist. Yet, soon afterwards, the unexpected happened. National Geographic held a press conference announcing the discovery of Archaeoraptor, failing to disclose the fossil as a fraud. And uh, we provided the data and our interpretation to the representatives of Geographic. And the, uh, the scientists in charge, as he walked out of the building, his last comment to me was, well, all of these Chinese things have been fiddled with. But he understood that 
there were profound questions surrounding this, and we'd been brought in as consultants simply to scan the specimen, and uh, which we did. We presented our interpretation, original copies of the data to all parties, and uh, it was a, a total shock when the news conference came that they were announcing that this was a valid specimen. Three months after the original CAT scan was performed, National Geographic published its story about the discovery of Archaeoraptor. The article claimed that Archaeoraptor was a flying dinosaur, a missing link, and the best evidence that birds evolved from dinosaurs, but failed to reveal the serious discrepancies found by Dr. Rowe. Those who oppose evolution suggest that if evolution scientists have to add scales to the heads of birds, add feathers to dinosaurs when neither have been found, or resort to creating fraudulent fossils as evidence for evolution, then there must be no proof. We have heard mm -hmm. over and over again that there are gaps in the fossil record, there are missing forms, and it's been implied the only reason they could be there is because evolution is not the explanation. I want to show you a very famous gap. It's a gap between mesonecid mammals, uh, land-dwelling carnivores that lived, oh, 55, 60 million years ago, and archaeocetes, which were the oldest whales. We know from skull and dentition patterns that, as it turns out, these whales are very closely related to mesonecids. And my colleague directly across from me, Michael B., he once wrote, if random evolution is true, there must be a large number of transitional forms between Mesonica and the ancient whale, and much in the way that Dr. Berlinski has said, he said, where are they? Well, they're right here. Two. Three. There turn out to be... There turn out to be three transitional forms, including a complete skeleton named Ambulocetus natans, which turns out to be an extraordinary intermediate. And here's the point that I want to ask you. It turns out that all these fossils are found in the area where the Indus River empties into the Indian Ocean. They're all in the right sequence. And furthermore, they form a transitional series. Now, here's what I want to know, Phil. You keep saying, where are the transitional forms? Paleontologists dig them up. What's the matter with them? Here's what the matter is. The, the most important point to me um, is that the fossil record is most conclusively undarwinian, just where it's most complete, in marine invertebrates. Um, and that is uh, why it is shocking that one finds that where it's the most incomplete and where the imagination can have free play, that's where you get the examples. We don't know that these form no, a transitional changing. sequence at all, and you don't know how it could have happened and by what mechanism. And, I, and if you do, I wish you'd publish the paper on it, because okay. I'd love to see hang it torn to bits. Hang on for a second. I don't want anyone to miss the point. Dr. Behe said, where's the transition? Mm -hmm. Philip Gingrich and others dug up not one, not two, but three transitionals. Are they tra As shown in this diagram from the University of Michigan Natural History Museum, Ambulocetus is one of the important transitional fossils in whale evolution. It is thought by some to be a walking whale. Just in the last five or ten years, we've had some remarkable discoveries of fossil whales. And in fact, um, there have been discoveries that have indicated that um, fossil whales had feet and actually walked on the land. Frankly, I don't know why they could call that creature a whale. I have never seen a walking whale, and I've never seen a pig that flies. And they suggested some of these creatures were, were intermediate. You, frankly, I just don't believe it. They believe that because they want to believe it. Recently, some evolution scientists have backed off the assertion that Ambulocetus was an ancestor of modern whales because its eyes are high up on the head, like an alligator's eyes, quite dissimilar from whales and land mammals. Ambulocetus may be on a slight sideline, and we think that mostly because it's very strange. It has its eyes raised up on top of its head in a very strange way, and it's unusually large for an early whale. But mostly the eyes up on the top of the head seems like an unusual specialization. Maybe it's not on the main line. Evolution scientists claim the most spectacular intermediate fossil in whale evolution 
is Rhodocetus, an animal with four legs, a whale's tail called a fluke, and flippers. It would swim using its widened tail fluke like a modern whale, but it had four legs like a land mammal. A perfect transitional fossil between land mammals and aquatic mammals, just as Darwin predicted. The fossil whale that appears a little bit later is Rhodocetus, and this animal had um, large tail vertebrae that indicate there were lots of room for muscle attachment. So here we see the beginning of the type of locomotion that's characteristic of a modern whale, using um, just the tail flukes for propulsion and not using the hind limbs. We have a complete modern whale type structure in Rhodocetus. There are no, uh, not many modifications from Rhodocetus to the modern whale other than changes in size of the uh, structures. When this video series was being filmed on location at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, the executive producer noticed a discrepancy between museum drawings of Rhodocetus and the fossils. The reconstruction of Rhodocetus had a whale fluke, but there were no fossils of the tail to confirm this. Dr. Phil Gingrich, the scientist responsible for the discovery and reconstruction of Rhodocetus, was questioned how he knew there was a whale fluke on Rhodocetus since that part of the fossil was missing. What was the uh, reasoning that uh, the scientists think there was a fluke on Rhodocetus um, based on the other pieces of anatomy? Well, I told you we don't have the tail in Rhodocetus. So we don't know for sure whether it had a ball vertebra indicating a fluke or not. So I speculated it might have had a fluke. Scientist Gingrich also acknowledged that the flippers were drawn on the diagram without these fossils. Now, he does not believe this animal had flippers. Again, his answer was surprising, since the museum diagrams had flippers on Rhodocetus. Now since then, we found the forelimbs, the hands, and the front arm, the arms, in other words, of Rhodocetus. And we understand that it doesn't have the kind of arms that can be spread out like flippers are on a whale. And if you don't have flippers, I don't think you can have a fluke tail and really powered swimming. And so I now doubt that Rhodocetus would have had a fluke tail. Many experts consider whales to be the best fossil evidence for evolution, but are unaware of these discrepancies. Opponents of evolution contend that whale evolution is nothing more than hopeful supposition. If museum diagrams are redrawn and corrected for various discrepancies, opponents argue that whale evolution is non-existent. <laughs>